Hello, everyone, and welcome to this panel organized by the French Bureau Expo. The subject this afternoon is the future of jazz in Europe. Uh, what assessment we can make of our present situation? How do we organize our future? What are the challenges and the strategies at hand? I'm Laurent de Wilde, the musician and board member of the Adami. Joining me to answer those questions are Helene Hudson from the EFG London Jazz Festival, Andreas Brandes from Act Music Label in Germany, Jan Ole Opnais from uh, the National Jazz Scene Victoria in Norway, and Reza Akbarali from Quest TV in Paris. Yes, uh, thank you everybody for uh, being here today. I'm particularly eager to hear what each of you has to say about, uh, well, how to cope with the uh, uh, the future we're facing. But before we engage in this conversation, I'd like to propose a tribute to uh, somebody very dear to all of us who passed away last Sunday. It's uh, John Cumming. Uh, he was a major figure in British jazz, a true lover of this music and one of his best ambassadors. Maybe Pelin, you would like to say uh, a few words before we start? Yeah, as you uh, very well put, John Cumming was one of the pillars for the UK jazz scene and one of the important figures in the global jazz scene in general. He was the one of the founders of Sirius, uh, the company behind the FG London Jazz Festival and also one of the founders of the festival alongside David Jones and then Claire Whitaker, who later joined them. Uh, I joined Sirius more than two years ago and I had the chance to work with him for uh, very intensely for a year, but I knew John for about 17 years in our collaborations around International Jazz Festival's organization. He was a dear friend, a dear mentor, a very generous guiding light, so we will miss him dearly. Yes, Reza, you would like to say a few words? Yeah, just yeah. I just learned that uh, yesterday, and I was very sad because, of course, it's it's a big loss. It's a big loss for for the for, for the community for sure. But John, to me, was always uh, an inspiration. I, I I know him also for yeah, like almost yeah, fifteen twenty years maybe we. Used to work uh, when I was working at Mezzo TV. We did a lot of live shows from the London Jazz Festival. I met him many times in different festivals and and fair like different fairs all over the world. And it was an inspiration because the I don't know how to summarize summarize this this man, but it's it's, it's enthusiasm. The guy was so enthusiastic every time we were together. He was like, oh yeah, you know. Wow. Did you listen to this new thing? Let's go. Let's hang there. Da, da. He was, and he was, I, 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 I don't know. He was like maybe 20 or 25 years older than me. And sometimes I was like tired. I was like, eh, I want to go back home, uh, to go back to the hotel. And he was, no, you should check this band. You should check. I said, okay, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so it's a big loss because, to, you know, working in this field, it's something, but keeping this level of curiosity and, and enthusiasm, that's the key. That's the key. And it was, to me, it was perfect to that. And yes, I'm very yeah, sad and my condolences to, to, to Pelin and, and the team and uh, yeah. Yeah, Pelin, it must be very hard for you to uh, face that loss and, and the loss of the, the festival. Actually, well, since uh, uh, we're on the subject, uh, we'll gather. Like add, could I add a few things? Yeah, no, oh, of course, by all yeah. means. Yeah, because I've known John for 25 years and worked close with him on a few projects. And I'd like to mention his big contribution to Europe Just Network, where I'm the president now. He was on the board for many years. He was one of the founders of the organization and he's been so inspirational. He has been my hero and my mentor for 25 years and I will miss him a lot. Yeah. Okay, Andreas, a word. <laughs> yes, um, and I think the very special thing about John was that 
no matter how long you work with him or how long uh, you've been in touch with him, um, he was right in and very enthusiastic about any idea. You could meet him for the first time and talk about music and he was enthusiastic and very empathetic and was always sharing his huge experience he, um, he collected in our little world in, in jazz and music in particular. So he's a great, it's a great loss and um, yeah, it was a shock this week, so. Yes. Uh, so, Pellin, uh, why don't you tell us what the situation is in London? Uh, basically, we have two sides of the jazz uh, industry here today, uh, the live side and the recording side, even if uh, the two of them are really closely intertwined. Uh, the live scene is the one that is immediately affected and obviously for a long time. What is your take on that? Um, like the rest of the world, like possibly we are closer to the, uh, to the developments, the follow of the scheme, what, what happened in Europe. Uh, obviously, we're still uh, in lockdown. It's it's not as 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 strict as what happened in in Italy or Spain, but at the moment, uh, the social distancing measures are very much in place. Working from home is still the guidance from the government. Uh, some sectors are invited to start working from the offices uh, or the sites if they can, if they should and the employers should have the necessary measures to make sure the health and safety of the employers are in, in place. But obviously, when it comes to, to live music, live entertainment and tourism, there is there's a lot to be discussed. It's not just about the measures, it's about the confidence of the audience, etc. And we don't exactly. necessarily have the clearance, you know, the, 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 the guidance to be able to open the venues. And as, a, as an organization uh, and a festival who doesn't necessarily have its own venue, we are following up the guidance uh, of the government and the general policies that the venues put forward. So at the moment, it looks like uh, the clear statement is until end of June, the venues are closed and the concerts are being postponed or cancelled. Most of the concerts are actually, with good intentions, are being carried forward either towards the end of the year or to 2021. Uh, but everybody plays it by the ear to restart the activities. And there is a strong uh, assumption on obviously having social distancing limitations within the venues. And the venues are discussing how feasible that would be to operate under these circumstances. At this present time, terms, sorry? At this present time, excuse me, at this present time, the festival is still happening? The festival is still happening. The festival is still planned as, uh, as normal. Uh, on the other hand, we are already, we were already working on um, increasing our digital sphere, our digital realm anyway. So that was one of our priorities. So we are getting ourselves geared up for all sorts of different scenarios so to say normally we would have announced the festival on like almost 60 percent of the festival and then most of it by now and then most of it by the end of june and then the full announcement to follow in september whereas we are we are holding off any announcements for now to make sure the 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 audience is ready to receive such messaging and when you talk about when you talk about the scene it's the the it's important to address the musicians or the communities or the organizations who are active in the scene it's not just about the technical side of things you know the venues and the crowd etc what is more important which we will obviously talk about in this panel is how the artists are coping with this, how the communities are coping with this. It's delicate how the artists are creatively responding to the, to the crisis, how smaller organizations are struggling to survive and see the light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, these are all probably the conversations we're gonna have, but obviously we are, we're in a bit of a limbo 
And we are trying to make sure we use this limbo time uh, to invest in developing ourselves again in the digital sphere, thinking about new creative ideas to collaborate with artists to provide them performance opportunities for artist development ideas to provide them the support mechanisms from grants and funding schemes. So we are currently very busy at, at the backdrop, even though we don't have an immediate uh, physical output. We work on digital live streams. Every two weeks we have serious live stream sessions from uh, YouTube and Facebook. So yeah, I mean, uh, obviously we, we, we can't stop but that doesn't necessarily mean we have an immediate positive reward, but we can see the love and support around, around, our, uh, around our work, which is important. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jan Ole, uh, how is it up there in Norway? Well, when uh, the corona crisis hit us mid-March, we had to cancel and reschedule 40 shows that were programmed from mid-March until mid-May. And we were able to to move most of them to the fall and to next winter spring, and then we decided to live stream nine shows that was programmed from from mid April, and two weeks ago the government opened up so we can now do shows with up to fifty people in the audience. So we did, did you try that already. We did one last week, and we are doing one tonight. And we do them as a combination. How did that feel like? Excuse me? How did it feel like? It was a kind of overwhelming, both for us <laughs> inviting people into the, into the venue and also for the band stand on, on stage for the first time playing for, a, for, a, for, for, for people alive. So, <laughs> I mean, over venue has a capacity of 300. So uh, last week we were 50, tonight we will be 50. Um, the two next weeks we will have exams for the conservatory, the Jazz Department of the Conservatory. And then from May 15, from June 15, we can open up and have up to 200 in the audience. For Victoria, because of the social distancing, uh, we can maximum have 140. So in the long term, that's, that is not sustainable. But as a start, it's important. Uh, so we are planning now for the, for the fall season, 70 shows. 35 of them are with only Norwegian musicians, so that's no problem. 15 is a combination of Norwegian and international, 12 European bands and 12 US bands. And we don't know what will happen with them. Uh, for the live streaming we have done so far, it has been in principle for free, but with the possibility of donating uh, uh, some tickets uh, voluntarily from uh, the audience. And we had uh, an income of an average of 1,500 euros per show, which is kind of okay. And the musicians who played got the fee that we had agreed on in advance. So they got the fee and we split the, the income from the, the donations between us and the artist for us to pay for the streaming. If we are doing streaming for the, for the fall, we will have to do it as a ticketed thing, not uh, as a voluntarily payment thing. The, the, uh, the ticket company that we work with- yeah, yeah, Ole, I'm sorry, what, one question. Uh, how much do you sell the, the online uh, streaming concert? How much? How much do you sell uh, a ticket, an online ticket for, for a streaming session? We haven't done that so far. We will do that in the fall. Oh, okay. So it has been donations and it, the audience have, have donated between 10 and 20 euros as a normal thing. Okay. Sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah. So if we shall do streaming in the fall, it has to be paid streaming. You have to, you have to buy a ticket in advance to get access to the stream. And there has been some quite successful uh, concerts in, in Norway the last three weeks where you had to buy tickets. The, the most visited and best paid show got an income of 20,000 euros. Wow, wow that's nice. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Andreas, uh, how is it working out in Germany? 
Yeah, um, well, I mean, we are sited in, in Germany and it's the label. And also we have a live agency. So I have both perspectives and we work all across Europe. So um, it's a, it's a, let's say that the picture is very diverse when it comes to the, to the label, when the crisis hit us um, and the lockdown really took place, most shops and the whole retail structure closed down. And in the jazz world, um, the business is still quite physical. That means that since the lockdown started and since all the retailers closed down, more or less all the turnover for most of the of the independent labels is zero. Um, of course, there's digital income, and we I'm sure we will talk about uh, digital income streams uh, later <clears throat> in more detail. Um, yeah, so on the label side, it was a lot about restructuring um, and rescheduling uh, releases and stuff like that to 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 a fall. And of course, the whole label structure has to be uh, had to be restructured, uh, working from home um, and, and uh, creating the digital infrastructure to en enable the whole team to work from home, etc. And um, and we we um, focus quite fast on um, on putting all the focus uh, to to the digital channels we have and uh, to the digital platforms and also we start to support independent retail stores to um, to develop creative concepts to be in touch with their customers and to still buy music which was just released before the lockdown or was scheduled already and there was no chance to postpone it and to give the artists a chance to um, have the attention for the records out there, right? And um, and the live situation hits the all the labels, of course, um, as well, because without touring, um, the, the artists are not visible, the record is not really visible in media, etc. And so it all belongs to, to each other. And there have been a lot of records coming out beginning of the year, uh, which is true for all the labels, all the records from January, all the releases from January, February, March, uh, where the touring had been scheduled for March, April, May, etc. Um, they're out there in, in the limbo uh, Pelinist uh, just talked about. Um, and the record is out and there's no touring. And for some of the artists, it was possible to postpone the touring to, to next year. Um, but for uh, quite a bit uh, a chunk of, 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 of the artists here, it, it wasn't possible. And I can see that on the agency side. We lost a big number of, of, um, of concerts where there's no re replacement possible in fall. And that's especially true for, um, for young talent and newcomers, right? Because the fall is now so competitive because everyone wants to play there. And um, it's especially for them, very hard to find new slots and um, and to reschedule their touring activities. So we we are facing different problems um, in different fields of of the business right now. And so far, I mean, we are doing okay as a label. And um, and in Germany, I have to say, thank God, there's a lot of support for um, for the scene. Uh, I mean, a first step support. A lot of artists could apply for uh, for uh, some fundings. Um, a lot of companies could apply for fundings, and um, I'm also in the board of the Association of Independent uh, Labels and uh, Independent Artists in in Germany. And uh, we're in talks with a lot of other players from other genres, and um, it's more or less everywhere the same because it's hitting the whole value chain. It starts. Uh, with the artists, and then you have the whole infrastructure around labels, booking agencies, distributors, uh, managements, and, and uh, it's it's tough, and it's a huge community which is uh, um, affected. Yes, well, basically, this this crisis has obviously shifted our attention or focused our attention to the the digital distribution. Uh, you were saying. Uh, uh, artists who were uh, putting out albums and were, were supposed to tour the album were not visible anymore. Well, 
Obviously, uh, the web is the place to be visible, is the only place to be visible right now. Yeah. And uh, uh, Reza, that's, we're right down your alley. And before we start talking about it, maybe uh, you and I could make a little assessment of what the situation in France is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you could, so yeah, about France. Um, so we the lockdown was officially over uh, May 11th. That's the that was the date. But we but of course all the venues, the restaurants, and coffee are still uh, uh, closed. Uh, so uh, also in terms of uh, work, uh, for example, I'm still working from home. And all my team are working remote, also from home. So there is no, there is no way back right now to the, to the office. And uh, yes, so that's that's where we are now in France. I think it's gonna be like better and better with the, the, the next, in the next, in a few weeks maybe. They talk about June, but it's gonna be like more. Right now we are we have the we are only allowed to travel. Uh, up to 100 kilometers from where you are. So, of course, international travelers, and of course, that's 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 forbidden, like every, everybody. Uh, so that's for the situation in France. And you want to add something, maybe, Laurent, about France? Yeah, yeah. I, I would like to add that um, uh, you guys uh, make uh, me feel as a Frenchman particularly pessimistic because uh, I've just well. All the summer festivals have been have been canceled. Yeah, uh, most of the fall action is canceled or waiting to be canceled, and the general understanding is that business will start again uh, by the beginning of next year. Uh, it strikes me as a very uh, psychological notion of when to open why on january 1st and not one week before you know mm -hmm. oh because it's before christmas so what you know <laughs> so um it looks like uh france is racing up for a long period of no live music uh it's a little depressing uh but all the signals we get are pretty negative as far as projecting ourselves on a shorter time frame. In other terms, September, October, don't count on it. Uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm amazed that uh, both uh, Jan Ole and Pelin and uh, uh, you are, are projecting yourselves in the future with so much optimism, and I hope you're right. <laughs> But in the meantime, um, the problem of visibility on the internet, because uh, uh, so far, Rosa, you had you had a pretty well established uh, corner in uh, you know in on music TV on the on the net, and now you will certainly see a, a host of of newcomers, all the live musicians who want up you know, a piece of the, the a bite of the, the internet action. So yeah. how, how do you feel about that? And, and what do you think is gonna happen? So my feelings are um, uh, there is different, different side of that. So the first one is that for sure, because of this COVID crisis, now everybody's shift to the, to the digital world, which is, uh, uh, only uh, talking about in the business, uh, only about the business side. Uh, it's a good thing for uh, Quest TV because we 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 saw that of course, like the, the April, uh, March, and April was amazing. Like a lot of subscription, a lot of interest, of course, uh, which is good for the business, but also good for the experience because people could could not, could know, but you could also enjoy shows live shows uh, uh video videotape uh live shows and also documentaries we have a lot of documentaries so people we, yes we, we, yeah we 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 saw that we noticed that but people uh, you know we had we had subscribers for for years and they you know we could we could see we could data track every every step and every every profile and we say oh this guy is, is, is a subscriber for one year but he didn't. He didn't. He didn't watch that much things. But during the COVID, of course, they just that time. So they just 
go deeper into the into the subject and they were looking for a lot of documentaries so that's that's only talking only about the business for quest that it was a good good thing but then also um of course it's it's a nightmare for live music uh, in general for musicians for everybody it's a, it's, a, it's a real nightmare so that's why also we are and uh, but also for us because since our main programs are documentaries okay so that's one thing but the other one are archives but that's that's easy because archives is already done so i just license the content from the others from the archives from the bbc from the nrk from from belgian and french television so a lot of black and white archives but for the new things of course i was that's what i i was telling before when we were talking about john we used to we we are filming a lot of festivals so we, we used to be partner uh, partner with Jazz à Vienne in France, with Jazz à la Villette in France, with Montreal Jazz Festival in Canada, uh, with London Jazz Festival, with a would lot you consider, of... Would you consider uh, uh, producing some live uh, uh, filming, but without an audience yes. you know, exactly. for musicians? Exactly. So now with this uh, crisis, we, we, we are like, okay, of course, uh, 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 fortunately, we have some stock. We have a lot of programs already uh, in our stock. We could we could release like for the next six months. That's fine. We have a lot. So it's like it's like uh, Andreas with a label. Maybe you have already you know, some record uh, records already done. So it's, it's you you, could, you 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 keep it yeah. uh, don't go you, you, you keep it going. It's fine. But uh, yes, now uh, because you are talking about that also, Laurent. Like like of course. There is everybody wants to do live stream. So by themselves, let's say that like on Instagram, the artists directly could do that by themselves or Facebook Live or YouTube Live is the same. But that's uh, free. That, yeah, that's the, the, the big problem is that because that's free. And everybody wants to, I think in the, uh, my, 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 my observation of the situation right now is that, is that at the, in the beginning, Everybody was like, okay, uh, with this COVID crisis, like, okay, what we could do? So the artists themselves say, okay, I need to express my art. I need to do stuff. So I'm going to film myself and I'm going to share that to the world through my Facebook or Instagram account. Okay, why not? But then at the end of the day, they, 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 they start to notice that, okay, that's good, but we are just giving food to Google, Facebook, Let's say that two ones. This is the same company as you know, Google and YouTube, Facebook, and so. And then nobody gets any money, but just them because they are doing a lot of traffic, but there is no money for 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 the artists and for the managers, booking agent. Like nobody gets get paid. So that's why I'm now talking a lot and thinking about, a lot about what 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 Jan Ole was saying. Like, okay, maybe you could do that by yourself, of course. Why not? But it's it's a lot of work, you know. That's that's another business. St video streaming, it's something a whole thing, but very very easy to you know to build a catalog. But believe me, as you know, my, my business partner is Quincy Jones, so it's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> aim, you know, like the the aura is big and 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 the, the impact is big. But even with that, we, we struggle a lot, you know. It's not easy, it's not easy to convert people to pay because there is so many, 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 many free acts. On the on the web, and everybody wants to do their own things. So, and my I would, I would, love, to, I would love to add there something. If, if yes, if please, um, I think this crisis in general re reveals a very old problem <clears throat> and makes brings it way more into focus that the whole business, but especially our small jazz world, let's put it that way, is totally depending, especially for the artist and his income or her income um, on the on the live income, yeah. because there are almost no digital income streams. <clears throat> and and that's true for everyone in the in the scene. Um, I mean, you can read uh, uh, currently a lot of articles saying um, it hits the artists and uh, labels, etc. Are, are still earning money through Spotify, et cetera. That's true for, let's say, major companies um, and pop business and rock business, but uh, in, in the jazz world, and to a certain extent also in the classical world, we are sitting all in the same boat. 
because the income from from Spotify is almost not existing. Um, there are no uh, convincing concepts to play concerts and to have real uh, digital ticketing for it. And um, one of the biggest problems, and I guess also for you, Reza, is the fact that YouTube is out there as literally the biggest streaming yeah. platform in the world, okay. and they're licensing nothing. I mean, they have all their yeah. adver advertisement income, but they're literally paying the artists nothing <clears throat> and have probably the biggest stake in the market overall. And, um, and all those problems are now way, way more into focus than before. And I think it's a chance. And um, we, we should challenge ourselves how to, how to um, unify our voices even more in the scene across Europe to change that and to make a political political thing out of it that um, that uh, a, a decent payment has to be there for digital uh, content out there on the web exactly yeah. i think i think it's it's only been like two months slightly more than two months for certain territories and the initial reaction was a reaction not necessarily building to a long-term strategy. It was more, like you said, Reza, as a way of survival, to a way yeah. of expressing themselves. And obviously you can't just say, oh, let's put exclusive content and make it ticketed or on, uh, behind a paywall. Whereas right now there are good examples where strong artists who have a strong following is now starting like you said, ticketed performances, and that could become uh, the new norm at a certain point. I, but that's not necessarily um, an ideal place to be for an emerging artist. So how can the emerging artists be present and still be paid for their work? And I think at this stage, the you know more it's a stronger platforms like festivals or existing venues. Uh, who can help the outreach of these artists actually can provide that infrastructure. But obviously it's still early days, even though we feel like we've been locked down forever. It's been again, like two, uh, two months, two and a half months. Obviously there is gonna be some response. And if it comes from some examples where these artists can, you know, um, pull a lot of interest and set an example, you know, to the, to the methodology, I think that would really help. And otherwise, it's really important to kind of build strong partnerships with either uh, festivals, venues, or platforms who are, you know, not necessarily exploiting the artist's content, but actually providing an income to them, as well as providing the great content to their audiences. And obviously, at the moment, the provision, the online provision is not curated and it's too much. The good ones, the ones like, London Symphony Orchestra or Berlin Philharmoniker or National Theatre, they are or they are not live streaming, they are streaming their archives at huge quality. So that is one side. And then the other side is very DIY, you know, uh, live streams where you can actually tolerate for the first month, but the audience will then, you know, eliminate these because maybe these DIYs wouldn't necessarily be tolerate the mistakes, you know, the hiccups won't be, and the audience will be expecting better digital content. That's why we need to gear up for that position, plus being able to monetize it, uh, to be able to survive, make sure the industry survives, mainly for the artists and other other stakeholders in the scene. Andreas, uh, did I feel a little skepticism from your side uh, about the, the ticketing of online concerts? From my side, yeah, um, no. That, I think it's absolutely necessary that uh, that we have it, but it's uh, only one piece in the puzzle. Um, I'm I'm not skeptic at all right now. I mean, of course, we are in we are in, in limbo, and and uh, what we are especially missing here in Germany is um, reliable regulations for for concerts and how to. To, to bring artists back on stage. Um, that's, that doesn't feel good at the moment because there are no right now. 
and a lot of clubs can start and um, and we are all waiting for that. Norway is ahead and a very good example. Um, I think that helps that there are examples out there um, proving that there are ways to, to do new concepts like having an audience plus streaming, etc. I think that's a very good start. And, um, and we are behind here in Germany. Um, but the ticketing um, is one thing um, to make all those streams visible and the concerts visible and not to um, dilute the overall value uh, of, of, of an artist or a band is, is a very sensitive thing because if you play several streaming concerts and as in the past, th those concerts will stay in the, in the net forever, for example, then an artist has immediately like 25 live performances with the same repertoire out there in the net and that doesn't work either. So um, the, the digital concert should also be something unique and a, a one-time sensation rather than um, getting everyone used to the fact that you can watch the concert forever and then there's no need to play other concerts, right? Because a, a digital concert has no, um, has no local relation, right? If, if someone plays Berlin today and Paris tomorrow and, uh, and London the day after, it doesn't matter for the online community, right? So you are targeting new audiences, which, which is good, but you have to keep it exclusive at the same time. Otherwise, the artist just has to play one concert for Europe and that's it, right? Yeah, that's, 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 that's a very good point, Andreas. I want to re just react on that, which is like, exclusivity and i think because just before we were talking about the music we were talking about the major label and you we were talking about the small jazz world which is true and i think that we did a big 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 mistake in our world which is like i know that because for quest tv i'm licensing content i'm paying the artist i'm paying the label i'm paying the the, the 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 right holders to get that kind of, of content okay so and when i see that as you said like okay let's say i don't know uh let's say i don't know uh, uh richard bona okay the, the the bass player and i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna uh, go to his management or his uh, record company and i'm gonna say oh there is this show it's amazing and i want to license it that they say hey, it's okay that's 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 okay but it's like 500, 1,000, 2,000 euros just as an MG, then we could do a ref share, blah, blah, blah. Why not? But then I go on YouTube and there is like 50 mm -hmm. concerts of Richard Bonner, the same tour, the same band, the same music, everything. And when I say that we did a big mistake, I think that if you, if you, if you look to the pop side, you, 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 won't find, you won't find a pirate concert of Beyonce or Taylor Swift on YouTube. All the things you have on these people on YouTube are official. It's through Vevo or it's through their own account. It's totally, it's really, really well done. You know, they won't put the everything, but us in the jazz world, it's like, oh yeah, we, we're gonna give that to YouTube. It's cool, I'm gonna produce things for YouTube because like that, I'm gonna have some likes and I'm gonna have some views. I won't have any money because, you know, even if you, if, even, even if you, if you, if you enable the, the monetization tool, you're gonna get like, you know, it's nothing. It's like oh, there, was, there was this guy who who, who calculated that uh, in order to earn the the average income of a Spotify worker, a guy mm -hmm. on the payroll in Spotify, he would need over a month to have two hundred and twenty six million views of one song. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I see. I see on the live feed uh, a very interesting and down to earth question. I would like to throw it at you guys. Here it goes. I'm so curious about this. What do you need from the artists? What kind of behavior from us is the one that will help everyone through? That's a help call from an artist. Uh, Jan, would you have mm -hmm. an answer to that question? I think it's very difficult at the moment to give a good answer on that. I mean, <clears throat> in Norway, hardly any musicians have any work now. And that's the big problem because it's just a few venues that are open. So I think, yeah, it's, it's hard to say what to do now. I mean, internet I looks like the outlet, right? 
Yeah, but, but. Internet looks like the outlet. Yeah, I yeah, think. It, I mean, I think that's what it has, it has that's to be what the more organized than do-it-yourself things at home. I mean, the yes. things we're doing at Victoria is a four-camera production, and we have been doing this for four years. So, so it's a different thing from from the 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 thing that comes from from living rooms or bedrooms around the world. So it has yeah. to be high quality if we shall make this work. But I, but I think um, it needs. I mean, it's it's important. I think every artist has this question right now because all the artists around the globe are unemployed at the moment and don't earn any money. And in some states, uh, in some countries, they get help from the government in others nothing which is even worse and um, and i think we have to be uh, uh, to to offer creative and um, optimistic ideas also for for them and it's true um, and i can understand the reflex to to start doing stuff from home because you're lost and you don't know what to do um, and now when um, when the situation opens up a little bit. I think it's it's helpful to to collaborate a lot on a local basis. So my office here in Berlin is right next to to um, to Jazz Club and they start to to do on a regular basis streaming concerts um, with a good quality with local based artists because they have the problem that there are no uh, Traveling is not possible, so there are no international artists around, and they they focus even more on the local scene, which is also a chance uh, for the scene, and uh, and something good ca can come out of such collaborations. And I think it's important to to focus on local and to find local partners and to create solutions which are which don't cost the world and uh, can deliver good quality, and most importantly which are paid in the end for the artists and not for free. I think um, do it your own and and for free is the worst scenario um, yeah. in the mid and long term. So local activities are, are important, I think. I think yes. I think rather than the industry or the, you know, people like us sitting in certain positions demanding things from the artists to chip in, I think, like you said, Andreas, us giving a modest advice and some encouragement to the artists who are at the core of this, uh, you know, problem where they don't necessarily get the opportunity to perform and to get the income. Uh, obviously, these kind of crises uh, can create a very creative response from from an artistic point of view. So. I think keeping the positive focus for that end of the, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel and making use of this sitting at home period for creative, you know, like processes, like writing new music, uh, again, collaborating with uh, other artists online, exchanging ideas and uh, definitely reaching out to keeping the their, their local communities there social media followers, their fans involved in those processes and keeping these, you know, contacts active so that they are not forgotten when the doors open up and they, the performance opportunities are there. There's going to be a bottleneck. There's going to be a certain time frame left. There's going to be certain availabilities left in the venues. All the rescheduled shows will be rammed into these, into these venues for next year. So... I don't think even even the lockdown is going to be open when when it's going to be open. There's immediate opportunity for everyone. It, well, needs to be carefully thought through, you know, to how to manage that time as well to plan. I think it's a it's it's a although the m lack of motivation at the current lockdown situation is not necessarily helpful for the creative process. I think focusing and having a exit strategy for the artists is, is a good thing. And definitely seeking the advice of, of people who have access to, you know, programming channels, like funding channels, uh, you know, other institutions who may help, definitely, yeah, look for them, I would say. 
Now I would like to go back to the, uh, my original question. Uh, um, what, because visibility is going to become one big issue. There used to be live music and, and the artists would give concerts and sell albums at the end of the concert. And that's one, you know, one way of, of making money. And now uh, they would be some, uh, some other means of, uh, of expressions. But how do you uh, uh, how do you uh, uh, arrange visibility when everybody everybody and everything is going to be on the same plan? It's going to be two dimensional. <laughs> the, it's the size of your of your uh, computer screen. So what do you think is going to emerge as form of as form in forms of visibility? You mean augmented experiences around the digital output or... Uh, I'm just talking about like just the being, being out there and, and, and making, make, uh, making known that you have an album out that I can be bought and, you know, the usual, the, the stuff that you used to do when you were touring live, the repertoire of an album that just came out. Yeah, I mean, it's still, of course, the, the channels didn't disappear, right? So regarding media it's most of it's still there um you have the the old school um um offline media uh daily newspapers weekly monthly the special specialized magazines etc so so there is there's a lot of media you can you can uh, um get reviews and stuff and, and visibility and then you have the whole online world world and um and i would always say um no matter if you have a label or not, um, as a recommendation for, for an artist, is to to focus on on content and the the. Uh, I mean, it sounds simple, but um, it's still true that um, more is less. Uh, less is more, <laughs> um, and more is less. You kind of <laughs> put it both ways, um, and uh, be to be really. Um, yeah, focused on quality content and to, to put this out through your channels um, not too often. And um, and which what is also a good thing for, for artists in, in, uh, in particular is probably to connect even more in, in these times with other artists and to, to promote the work of others you like, right? So, so that you, you can Build a network and and reach to other audiences of artists uh, who do creative stuff you like, which is perhaps a bit different to what you're doing yourself, and to widen the scope um, for your work. And um, yeah, networking is is a very important thing anyway, and a, and a great chance these days. I mean, we're talking here now, um, and I'm talking. Uh, recently to a lot of people um, I never had the time to talk a lot to and uh, we're we're doing a lot of online consultancy and and online management and stuff like that and to just get in touch with others in the same situation in another country to learn more about their solutions their creative ideas um, uh, that's a good thing and what I'm I don't know how it is in France you can tell me more perhaps what I'm um, shouting out for is that we need more music on public radio, for example, like even more jazz music. We have great um, radio journalists here in, in Germany and of course in France and UK and around the world. And, uh, and they need support and more visibility. And it's important that our music is played uh, in the radio even more, the jazz music. Uh, because also this is an income stream for the artist and the infrastructure, neighboring rights. The more music is played on radio and visible, it's important money or can be important money for the creatives. Yes, uh, Reza, let me ask you a question. You have an established, uh, uh, um, how do you call it, une chaîne, comment dire en anglais? Channel? A uh, channel, thank you. Uh, would you be open to uh, hosting 
uh, live events from different organizers like ACT Music or the or the national jazz scene. Would you would you consider uh, yourself at the, as a, a larger platform for other institutions to use your implantation in in, in the in, on the web? Yes, um, correct, and that's 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 right now. I'm I'm working on, a, on on that kind of plan because I know that and I understand that everybody wants to do their own things, but you know it's a, it's a long journey. <laughs> Believe me, it's like it's like it's like I, I always take the parallel between having a, having a festival and having having a media. And having a label, you know, everybody could say, "Oh, yeah, oh, London Jazz Festival, yeah, it's easy. We, we, we know the venue, we know the artist, we know the manager. I could do that by myself." But you know, London Jazz Festival, London Jazz, Festival, it's it's a huge one. There is some, you know, it's it's like every like every job, even in, not in the music business. Like every everyone has to has to know the job. So we are now. Um, I was I was in conversation with Quincy Quincy's team uh, last la, last week. We did a big. Um, like meaning around that, and we want to do two things. The first one is to uh, take this time, let's say uh, free time, because there is no concert anymore, and that's the first time when we, we could really talk with managers on artists on the archives, on because they have so many things online, they don't do, make any money uh, uh, on that. So. Before, when I was talking with them, like the, the example I told you about uh, Richard Bonner, and they said, yeah, you know, yeah, we don't care. You know, we, we, their job is to book the, the, the future shows. The, 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 the job of the manager, the booking agent is just to sell the next shows. But now there is no shows anymore to sell, let's say that, for, for, for a certain period. So it's just like you have to clean up. I think the artist has to clean up and to set up a, a, a strong and a real strategy, digital strategy, and say, OK, look, that's my music. That's my that's my that's my band. That's my music. That's my videos. And okay, I could give some of this content for for free on YouTube, Facebook because it's promotional. That's perfect. I, I totally agree. And YouTube, Facebook, and other things are an amazing tool to to be discovered and to be present in the digital world. But then, when you see that they give everything and everything. Everything is free. Even it's like in a festival. If if you want, if Pelin wants to book an artist, uh, I could call up Pelin and say, "Hey, I have an amazing French artist." And she, oh yeah, okay, why why not? Like, give me some, give me some, I don't know, YouTube links or send me some music. And then when she check on the web, she could see that the guy is playing for free in every bar or uh, 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 around the festival. Like in November, the guy is doing a tour for free on every every bar uh, in London. She's gonna say, "Hey Reza, okay, your 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 artist is amazing, but you know he's already playing for free everywhere. I I, I couldn't book him. You know, it's, it's that's normal. That's exactly the same in the digital world. So, so that's the first thing. So what we are planning to do right now is just to, I don't know exactly how to do that, but we just want to take contact with a lot of management and festivals and and people who don't have time to manage this, that kind of rights on the digital world because it's it's it, it's a, it's it's a mess uh, and, and 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 it requires a lot of of let's say skills and and lawyer and all these things and trust to clean to clean a little bit the, the 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 free assets they have and because most of them i had i had a conversation with a lot of artists with with richard galliano with uh, sylvan with, with with a lot lot of artists and they said yeah we know we have this content free on youtube i don't like it i don't like it i don't want to i don't want to have it on youtube but i don't know who put it on on youtube for free and and i, I don't make any money i don't like this show but it's there so that's the that's the that's the first thing to do i think then to answer your question about how to collaborate with the others of course like we have the technology we have all the you know we have we are now a team of 25 people working uh, full time on quest tv so it's a it, it start to we have everything is, is translated we have all the mailing stuff the payment system the the communication uh, uh, so of course like welcome uh, uh, over uh, uh, partners like festivals clubs label and building together a strong strategy and using our technology and our network Yes, it will be a pleasure. So um, um, 
I don't know right now. That's why I'm working on that. Uh, we, we are looking for the right way to work on that because uh, it, 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 I think it could. It has to be really well curated because our things right now on Quest TV, we try to curate and to have our own. We don't. We are not the YouTube of jazz. You know what I mean. So no, everybody could, couldn't put their own content. So the idea is like, okay, maybe we could work with uh, with, with with Jan on. I don't know one show a week or a month with uh, with uh, act music to one so we need to find this way to work together and uh, and and use our service for sure because it's uh, it's already there it's done and we are in you know we are we already have the, the apps we are already in uh, on different uh, telcos like uh, iOS Android and uh, Comcast in the US and Huawei in uh, phone and, and Samsung TV so everywhere we 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 are already there, so you could take advantage of that. That's the idea of how we could build the things together. Okay, I'd like to throw a last question at all of you. Uh, we are in in a pickle right now. Uh, we are trying to find immediate solutions to overcome the pickle we're in. Uh, hopefully things will return to normal by the fall or by uh, the winter. Uh, what do you think uh, will continue to evolve from the period we're in right now? And what will be abandoned? And what will never be the same? Jan Ole, you would like to speak? I think, I mean, the things you're talking about, no, the digital thing, it will continue, but maybe in different ways. What for sure will change is the travels. Uh, I think there will be much more green focus on touring than we have had recently. I mean, we have spent so much time and so much energy on flights and stuff like that. And I think a lot of artists now are thinking about how to take care of the climate instead of doing all the touring. And maybe a combination of live streaming and less touring will be an outcome of this. Andreas? Um, I think a lot will, will change. My hope is that um, the, the understanding and uh, the valuing for, for our music um, in this jazz world uh, will be different and that we will talk a lot more about uh, what an artist has to earn and what a value music has to the society, etc. That's the, the big picture. And it needs answers um, to, to uh, pay artists the right way and um, to make sure that there's an income and that it's possible to survive such a crisis in future without um, being de dependent on on, uh, on public fundings, etc. Because it's a, I mean, it's it's a very very bad situation if you as an artist um, used to stay on a stage and to have your audience, etc., have to beg for money to survive. And we have to change that, and we have to rethink about uh, a, a lot of things we did in the past. For example, putting um, content out there for free. And um, and to to um, to support all those platforms to dilute the value of, of music. I hope this will change, and um, and I hope we all will be more in touch about that and and shout out to uh, change this situation for everyone in in the jazz scene. And um, I'm sure that the that the live business uh, will come back and. Um, and digital will will never replace uh, the live sensation, and um, and it's great that there are so many um, creative ways to find solutions already. And um, I think this will go on. And I would I would agree to what Jan Jan Ole said that um, touring in general will be probably also different in the in the future. Um, more efficient touring in in the uh, regarding the routing and perhaps less. Here and there, jumping all, all over the world for single concerts, and um, and we are all—I um, mean, we we are all in charge to change that and to 
to to network even more for the booking sites to make that possible between festivals, uh, clubs, etc. to to give MRS the, the chance to travel uh, back to back uh, rather than jumping around uh, in the world. And um, yeah, I mean, I think um, as bad as this crisis is, it gives us a lot of opportunities and and chances to to talk about things and to 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 rethink uh, how we work and how we want to work uh, in the future. And I also think there will be more collaboration. And I think we, looking back to the 70s, the normal thing was that an American soloist came to Europe and played with local musicians. And I think we will see more of that, both within Europe and also between the US and Europe. More collaborations, yes. more exchange of ideas and, and, and musicians in that way you mean yeah. actually Ellen? Yeah. yeah that was uh, what Janole just mentioned was going to be my focus obviously i agree with the limited you know travel which is going to be an opportunity rather than a missing something out i think looking uh, valuing the local local scene and making sure the local scene and you know the artistic output from the local scene is there so that if there is any in interaction possible from a visiting artist etc that can then bring in an additional excitement interaction into the scene it's really important at the moment to localize and to support our communities and our you know the, our local scenes even though the output because of digital uh, uh, channels would be global Obviously, we need each other more and more in our local communities. And um, I think that at the moment, as I said, there is a big noise of uh, different types of digital output. These will fine tune. There's so many gimmicky things that artists playing within the video games, people trying to create, uh, you know, software to mimic the festival sites, drive-in concerts, this and that. Some of these will stay, some of these will, you know, people say, mm, it doesn't necessarily work. So th these will fine tune. But at the end of the day, be it free or not free, at the moment being it being free, is obviously hurting the income, you know, the revenue uh, possibilities for the artists, but it can actually serve as a taster for a future for the future. Think about the cinema industry. I mean, can we learn from the other industries? Can we learn from sports? Can we learn from TV and cinema? We thought cinemas will be dead because of Netflix. How did this, the, that industry adapt themselves to pay TV or on-demand TV type of situations? Was on-demand TV an additional opportunity for the producers and artists? It may be, so could we look into those models to tweak them into, into the music world? How did the cinemas or film festivals survive even though you know this was the case where people actually chose to sit at home and consume uh, TV, you know, co content made for TV. So can we learn uh, from these models? But at the end of the day, uh, the festivals, the live music, the events, they have this uh, irreplaceable, you know, experience where we need the social contact and it will come back. So that I have positive, you know, I have some sort of an optimism that it will come back. Nothing on, on, on a TV screen or a laptop screen can replace mm -hmm. the actual experience it's just that how can we pass to between today and that that point uh, making sure that we actually invest to that experience to that promise uh, and that means really enhanced uh, you know the digital output which doesn't necessarily risk that point because we will need our festivals we will need to be side by side with the other fans have that unique experience on stage just for us who are there physically uh, so yeah, uh, I think that that part won't change. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, but local localization is is definitely key at this stage. Uh, I have a question on the live feedback. Uh, another question from a musician, very down to earth. Given the dependence you mentioned on live revenues and in a long time perspective. What are your views about future future incomes repartition for jazz artists, digital, physical, 
live. Obviously, the live thing is is going down the drain. The the <laughs> physical stuff is is trying to survive, and the digital uh, channel is is hardly making any money. So it, I think it's a pretty interesting question. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting question. I mean, uh, physical will also go down the drain. Um, uh, I'm I'm sure. I mean, it will remain. You mean eventually? Yeah, I mean, it will remain to at a, at a certain level as a merch thing at live concerts, etc. But let's say in, in 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 a couple of years, in most markets there, you will hardly find a physical product uh, anywhere. So it's 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 really about about digital in a way, and um, it's on us more or less. No one will care. Uh, about jazz income than ourselves in in uh, our jazz community, um, we can look how uh, the classical world answered to some of those questions. So, um, due to the problems with the catalog and the huge repertoire they have, they started um, they started own streaming services. So, you have creative entrepreneurs in their scene. And, um, and it worked out quite well. I mean, there's one one uh, streaming service called Idagio, and it's more or less for classical music only, and they're doing well and are very successful. And I think uh, we are all um, kind of, yeah, challenged by the fact that uh, the streaming platforms like Spotify and others, um, they have a, a totally different uh, model to, to a business model than uh, which is not necessarily um, the right the right one for our musical content because um, jazz is very often no playlist music and um, and all those streaming platforms are focused on playlist music um, and how a song performs in a playlist. But it, with improvised music and sophisticated music, um, you can't produce singles and songs just because they have to fit in some format. Um, jazz is, is free expression and we need platforms where you can express this music freely for good money. Let's put it that way, very simple. And, um, and it needs such initiatives that we find answers for paid uh, content and paid services uh, where the artist is uh, participating and all the other stakeholders are particip uh, participating um, who are involved and invest money and, and, and their passion and love into the music. And um, yeah, it's about independence uh, in the future from a lot of things uh, we did differently in the, in the past. And I don't think okay. the live scene is going down the drain, but I think the big concerts may, might do it. But smaller concerts like the one we are presenting will still be super important in the years Small to come. is beautiful. Yeah, small is beautiful here. Okay, we're about to close this round table. Before we do that, anything uh, one of you want to add or throw in as uh, food for thought? There was a very interesting question from David McKenna. What about the online collaborations? Uh, yeah. and, and I would like to say that we are focusing on some, some uh, productions unique to our digital output. Uh, I think this can become an opportunity to be in the thinking of certain artists who never approached online as a possible area. They didn't want their shows to be filmed, they didn't want their content to be online, whereas now, if, if, if digital is the only way or an enhanced way of reaching out to more people, maybe these artists will be thinking about, yeah, I can actually do something here. And if the production conditions are perfect and if they can come, with, come together with the right people, they may even consider. So we are approaching some artists to make sure that they can collaborate with local artists digitally with making sure that the content is artistically driven by the artists it's not gimmicky it doesn't look like the you know viral uh, videos which kind of overpopulated the internet in the first days of the crisis of the covid crisis so i think uh, obviously that's why 
the industry serves as a nice filter or producer or curator, whatever you call it, we need to improve the digital, you know, the content itself. So mm -hmm. when the content is improved, I guess then the payments will come, then the artists will start to make money out of it. And the artists, please do invest in your local contacts and communities because they will be the ones. Now, National Justin is doing 50 ticket concerts. That individual artist, emerging artist, can actually do 50 ticket, you know, mini digital concerts to their own community without the production cost. I mean, of course, there will be some live, you know, like produ production cost, but without the venue rental cost, the logistic cost attached to it. So let's try to look at, look at it that way. Yeah, I mean, again. Okay, yeah, Pilot, there's a question about how, how your name is pronounced. You want to you want to answer that question? <laughs> He's someone who knows me, and he pronounces my name. <laughs> oh, <It's> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry to indulge. He's my colleague from the from the London Jazz Festival, so <laughs> he probably knows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. and um, I think I think I think when it's uh, as Pauline said. Right now, it's a lot about local activity, um, and I agree to that. Um, and local act activity is great, and at the same time, I think it's great to connect even more often um, on an international, in the international scene, like we do now, and to exchange ideas and um, to learn from each other and to de develop things uh, together. And um, yeah. To be creative together with the artists and and um, the whole scene. Reza, yeah, for me, the, um, with all this exchange, what what I what I see now is that there is three three different things for the future. I see like the first one is as I, as I said before, specifically for the artists, but also for the festivals, uh, is first to now take care of the digital strategy. Now everybody's see because i don't want to be pessimist but like there is the, the covid 19 and, and it, 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 it's a big mess and it's a crisis but if you are looking to the global world and the climate situation everything is like very scary and we there is a lot of people were saying just that's the beginning of of such a crisis so we don't know and I, of course i hope that it won't happen again but we know we, we now see that digital is let's say a safe place because you are by yourself at home, which is sad, of course, because I love the, 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 the vibe of being together in a concert for sure. But so this is this is where the people could go uh, by themselves. So first to really have a digital strategy. So that's the first things. And even I could extend that to for the artist to have a digital experience different than the live experience. So maybe building uh, I was um, uh, Jan was saying that it was really interesting I think the future is a mix between both like digit maybe less tour because that's true but sometimes it's crazy but when you are looking to the tour to, 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 to the agenda of the artist is like crazy like beam 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 like I don't know to, to 200 250 uh, dates a, a year it's amazing and you could say okay maybe they could do less and they could create like one beam one specific show uh for the online community because the, st the strength of the online community is that this is worldwide so if you have a fan base as you know laurent you are a musician so you know that you have people in france who love you but you also have people in japan in, in us everywhere in the world even if it's a small community everywhere you could just uh, 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 let's say create a rendezvous uh, and say hey guys you, you you like what i do you like my music this is my new projects and this is a specific projects i do for you online this is not some this is not like a a, a video recording of my concert home you know it's it's something else it's yeah. another thing mm -hmm. so the problem for, the problem for a musician is that he gives 20 or 30 concerts with the same program you know but uh, the the online concert yeah. is a one shot yeah but, but if you do some ticketing and and, and me f to be honest i'm okay to pay to pay, yeah, to pay, to pay, to pay, to pay, uh, 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 let's say uh, a high fee to see something very unique. And even if I have to pay 20, 30, 40 euros and it's like amazing things, yes, I'm gonna pay that, you know. 
So, and it's a worldwide thing. So if you have, as you know, like if you have 1,000 people who just pay for that in, uh, everywhere in the world, <laughs> uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, it, it, it could work, financially yeah. speaking, you know? Okay. Uh, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, so um, uh, I like the idea of local musicians, of course, uh, uh, and specifically collaborating together, like let's say back in the days when you had like an American artist who came, Miles Davis for Ascenseur pour l'Echafaud, for the soundtrack, like he just came to France and uh, recorded with a lot of the, uh, of these local artists, uh, Pierre Michelot and René Utreger. So maybe- And the, the Barney Willen. Hmm? And Barney Willen. And Barney Willen, of course. That, uh, so that's amazing because it's a, it's amazing collaboration between between two 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 countries and and yes I hope that it, it could happen more and okay and your third point uh, and the third point was was yes managing a digital strategy uh, and, and yes building building a strong uh, building strong digital assets so working on that because. Jazz is so rich that you could also uh, uh, you could you could collaborate with other musicians, but you could collaborate also with videographers, with with graphists, with with with, with writers, and the digital. Uh, you know, like Pelin should know that for sure because most there is there is sometimes there is artists who are coming to a festival and they say, yeah, we want that 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 the 3D things. We say, ah, oh, yeah, but we we are not we, we are not set up for that. But in the digi digital world, that's something you could do and make different collaboration than only music. And it could open the, 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 the border, let's say that. Yeah, well, thanks for that inspiring comment. Jan Ola, you'll have the very last word. I think this has, has been a very interesting talk. A lot of important issues that has been brought to the table. And uh, I think it's important to continue talks like this. EGN have had a weekly talk on Tuesdays for two, three hours. Now we are starting some webinars on some of the themes we have been talking about today. And I think talk together, exchange ideas, and we will come out on the other side in a very good way, I think. Yeah, well, thank you everybody for your time, your energy, your your intelligence and obviously from the comments we get uh we did uh, tackle important problems that everybody is looking answers to uh thanks again and i hope uh, we can do that uh in the near future with hopefully better news <laughs> yeah thank you thank, thank you. you thank you bye-bye